What is Gucci, my Nucci's Darwin TV here, and welcome to the first episode of the Half Court Podcast. Now, I have a very special guest here. I have the director of what? Athletics. For Athletics. Oklahoma City Public Schools. Yes. Oscar, my good friend Oscar. Welcome to the show, man. Hey, Darwin. It's really good to be here, my man. So, let's get it started, man. This is something that is, I think is going to be a fun podcast. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of everything before I get this show started. I kind of want to explain what we're going to do with this podcast. It's going to mainly be, obviously, sports. Uh, it's going to be called the Half Court Podcast, like I mentioned. We're going to touch a little bit of topics um, in the future, anything that has to do with you know, just random topics that are going to pretty much catch you guys' attention. But um, for now, we're going to do sports NBA right now because the NBA is hot, fresh out the oven. So I'm going to start off. And this, to me, in my opinion, Oscar, is going to be an obvious one. I think this is um, an easy one, too. Um, who won the San Antonio trade and the Raptors? Who won it? It's not even a question here, Darwin. Why? San Antonio won this one. You can, you can argue, you can go ahead and Senate. argue and say this, that it was kind of an even trade for both sides. But at the end of the day, the Raptors are not going to win anything. Kawhi's getting out. San Antonio gets a pick, first round pick. They get, and they get DeMar DeRozan and also another first rounder in Jaco Patel. San Antonio won this trade, no doubt. Okay, I see. Um, you kind of have a point just because they have the DeRozan contract and I feel like... Um, he got a couple of years left, so that kind of secures, you know, secures him in that uh, San Antonio spot plus the picks. I got to say, it is kind of 50-50 because even though um, you got to give a lot of credit to the Raptors, they went aggressive. They went aggressive, and this is why, right? They went ahead and fired the coach of the year. Coach of the year, right? They went ahead and got rid of DeRozan, saying that they, you know, even though they said they were not going to trade him, but they got rid of DeRozan, right? And they got a possible one-year rental, which was Kawhi Leonard, right? Correct. They went all out. They went all in for this one year. Right. Right, this one year. Which, even if they don't win, it was a big ac uh, accomplishment, right? And I think— Yeah, first um, time in, what, 23 years? Yes. Right. So they, they visit the finals for the first time. And I just got to say that it is— impressive it is impressive and I got to give it to the Raptors and even though Kawhi Leonard if he ends up leaving there might be a chance he ends up staying I mean look at the Paul George situation yeah he might stay big might he's gonna get go be, get going to Los Angeles or New York he's not gonna stay in Toronto I don't even want to stay in Toronto it's cold he's gonna be done after this year okay fair enough now the question I gotta ask you is let's say you know the Raptors win you know it's a possibility <laughs> as long as look as long as KD doesn't come back, I still think they have a shot. They don't need KD to win this. Okay. So, if the Raptors win, Kawhi if, Leonard wins finals MVP. If. Where do you rank them? The Raptors? Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard, number one player in the, in the entire NBA, in the world in basketball. Better than LeBron James. Easily. Why? He can play offense, and unlike LeBron, he can actually play defense. Do you agree with that, Santi? Nah. The cameraman says no. And I don't... What like, an explanation by Santi. Nah. <laughs> so, um, I got to say, uh, I don't agree with you, Oscar. I just don't. I feel like uh, LeBron James is LeBron James. And at the end yeah, of the LeBron day... Yeah, LeBron James is LeBron James not playing in the playoffs. Right. Way to go, but LeBron. You, come on. It's, it's year one. It's, it's year, year one, one? The Lakers. Yeah, year one. You got It's the first year in the Lakers. You got to give him a break, man. So... I think it's he would be the second best player over Kevin Durant, obviously, because he took this team. And if you look, if you switch roles, you put Kevin Durant in the Raptors, where are they going? Nowhere. Right now, with Kawhi? No, no, without Kawhi. Without Kawhi. So let's say they switch roles. Kawhi Leonard, instead of him getting traded to the Raptors, it's KD. Look, if Kevin Durant was with the Raptors this year, I think Milwaukee would have won. No doubt. Right. And there, that's, that proves my point as far as comparing who is better than, uh, who is a better, the second best player in my opinion, which is, in this case, is, is uh, Kawhi Leonard. I was going to say Kevin Durant. No, he's third. But it is Kawhi Leonard. Not better than Kevin LeBron. Durant's not even third. Not better than LeBron because LeBron can make players around him better. Kawhi can't. Look, LeBron can make players around him better. But at the end of the day, it's all about championships. He can get to the glory land. But he was in the Eastern Conference. Are you kidding me? Right. But tell me when when LeBron has had a team as great as the Raptors. 
Tell me. Look, they should have easily won the year that that they had Kyrie and they had uh, who's the Kevin other? Love. Kevin Love, and they failed. They failed easily. We're they talking about well, you're talking about against Cleveland Kevin Durant right now. Kevin Durant and the Golden State Warriors. Kevin Durant and the Golden State Warriors. Come on, son. We're talking about a stacked team. Five All Stars. Four All Stars in that case. Four All Stars. Doesn't matter. You're saying he's the best player in the NBA. He should have done something. No, 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 no. You're just being too harsh. What do you think? What do you think? I don't know. You got the best uh, score. You got the you got the best three point shooter in the game. You got the second best three point shooter in Clay. You got the two time Defensive Player of the Year in Draymond, which he's also a point guard, by the way. LeBron was doing everything. One of the best coach. You got one of the best coaches. You know what I'm saying, Steve Kerr? Kerr? Yeah. Get out. You got to give credit to him, man. You he's got a good to get manager. He just doesn't know how. He just knows how to not mess it up. That's the only right. thing he's good at. I don't even think he's that great of a coach, to be honest. At the end of the day, why? I just told you, he's not doing anything correctly with that team. The only thing that he is doing is just making sure that they, these players are not failing. And how can you fail? I could win a championship with these guys. Fair enough. I mean, Look, I think apart from that, I'm telling you right now, Golden State's going to win this in six. So you don't give credits? You don't give credit to Steve Kerr? You don't think the adjustments they made against Portland, which they got swept, by the way, you don't think that was Steve Kerr? Really? Yes. It was a, it, it was an amazing people. strategy, well, dog. I mean, I want you to look at the different side. You you had Golden State going up against Houston. You had them going up against a really good team in Los Angeles Clippers. Who did Portland play? Portland played a scrub Oklahoma City team. Then they went up against Denver, who shouldn't have even been there. Really young team, inexperienced. So when they actually saw real competition, no doubt they were going to lose that one. I put money on that sweep. Well, I think... I think even going back to the Houston one, they did a great job against James Harden without Kevin Durant. Yes. Wait, wait. So you're telling me that Golden State should have lost or something? No. I'm just saying the adjustments. I had right, Houston. The adjustments. Regardless, I thought Houston was. No, no, no. no. You, it's like you don't even know basketball anymore. The adjustments? <laughs> oh, look at Look scared. who they had. Look they were scared. playing against CP3, who I don't even think is that good anymore. Between, look, CP3 is going to be in the Hall of Fame, no doubt. But they also had to go up against a coach named Dan Tony. Dan Tony, a scrub coach, only 573% winning, doesn't have a ring next to, a, to his name. I don't even think he's even been to the finals. Well, th this is the thing, man. I, I don't like Dan Tony's system. I think he's overrated. I think that. The best team that had a chance, especially with Kevin Durant going out, was the Houston Rockets. Because I feel like if CP3 played like he played last year, he would have definitely been there. They would have definitely been to a Game 7, and who knows. Um, Capella wasn't the guy I thought he was. Very overrated. He talked a lot of BS in the press conference that he wants the Warriors. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. He ended up not showing up. Right. I think the only guy that really showed up was James Harden showed up in a couple of games. I think he needed to be more aggressive because um, he was scoring about 30 points a game, but we need 40 for you to win. So 40, you needed a score. He was playing too much of a point guard instead of a score. Aaron Gordon played pretty good in my opinion. I think he uh, scored the points that the team needed, but that's not going to do it against the Golden State team. No, it's not. So um, I think the adjustments that um, despite KD going out in game five, was it five? Mm-hmm. Was perfect for uh, the Rockets to advance and take these, take it to the conference finals, but they didn't. Got to give props to Golden State for making those adjustments, and that starts with Steve Kerr. I don't think so. Look, Houston was not going to win this series. Houston does not have the talent like Golden State does. Houston should... Houston could have easily have done this, but they're, they're playing with Dan Tony. Dan Tony doesn't even know anything about defense. Yeah, it's just... Harden, just do ISO, milk the clock, and shoot. Shoot a bad yeah. shot. Step back. So, I definitely you agree. You mean travel? You said what? You mean travel by James Harden. Travel, travel, yes. Anyways, so we'll get that out of the way. There's certain things, you know, that I agree with you that I agree and not agree, but it's fair enough. You know, everybody has their different opinions, so. Yeah, but mine are right unlike yours. Ah, yeah, come on. Come on, Skip, come on. Anyways, um, now that we're talking about, you know, the Houston Rockets, um, what is CP3 worth for this trade? Because I heard there's a lot of rumors. Look, like I told you right now, CP3 is a Hall of Famer. You know who else is a Hall of Famer? Vince Carter. I'd rather have Vince Carter on my team than CP3. He is not good enough to be in the NBA like he used to. He can give you assists, and then he's going to be in the injury report. 
You're he's right. He's not going to last right. the entire season. And if he's he, not even worth a second rounder, in my opinion. Right, and it, like it's crazy because he has this big, massive contract. So if they were to trade him, right, he has this big, massive contract. But if you look back at his resume, it's like in the past year, past three years, he hasn't made first team, second team, or hasn't made the All Star game. Like he has declined. And it's only a, it's crazy because it's only been a one year difference when you talk about comparing how he played before the injury in Game Six. Yeah. So in Game Five, I think he got injured, but you know, just comparing how he played back in those games to now this season has been just a rocky, I would say, you know, like just a rocky season for him. And I don't think it's gonna be hard. Who would you like? Who would you give up if you're uh, an opposite team? Well, it's gonna be tough because. He's a great assist player. He's always going to be a great assist player. The only place that he might be welcome back is a team that drafted him. Pelicans. Pelicans. And you know who the Pelicans have right now? Number one pick. Number one pick. And Anthony and Davis. Anthony Davis. Okay. Uh, so, my thing is, who do you give up? Because I think... Anthony Davis is worth way more than CP3, just CP3. So you, way more. Right. So you just can't do a one and one. You got to no. give up more. So who do you give up? Look, I would give up Clint Capella easily for Anthony Davis. CP3, how many first-round draft picks do they have? They have at least one I and think, then yeah. two second-round draft picks, something like that. That's a nice little package right there. And then somebody else that they need, that's all you need for Anthony Davis. Okay. Okay. So... But like I was telling you, with that contract, that contract is tough to get by by CP3. And I will give credit where credit is due by Houston. When the Houston's new owner took over, he didn't have to give CP3 that money. Correct. He really did not have to. I agree. I agree. And the, uh, to credit for CP3, he deserved that money, but he's in the decline of his years. He is not the same player that he was in Los Angeles. He's not the same player that he was at the beginning in Houston. He is not the same player whatsoever. He cannot give you as many minutes as he originally did. He is going to be one of the best players ever, like Tracy McGrady. Right, right. He's going to be a Hall of Famer. That's no doubt. That is no doubt. Um, now, going to you know the Pelicans. Now that we're in this topic, so if you're at, you know if you're the the back office, are you giving up Anthony Davis right yes. now, knowing that you have the number one pick? So doesn't matter. I mean, he did say he still wants out, despite that everybody knows clear as day they're going to land Zion. So, it's really easy here. Well, they might not even get Zion either. We have to think about that, too, because because of a few reasons. So, so you're saying one, the Anthony Pelicans Davis. won't draft uh, Zion? No, 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 I, no, no, no. I mean, Zion could still go back to college if he really doesn't want to be in New Orleans. And I don't want to be in New Orleans. I've been to New Orleans. Nobody wants to stay there. Anthony Davis, apart from this reason, he has so much power in New Orleans. If he wanted to, he could pretend to have a fake injury and they just be giving him so much money for nothing. I would rather get something for him now than just wait it out for a year doing nothing for the team. Okay, so if I come to you, you're the GM of the Pelicans, and I come to you and say, hey, you know what? Forget CP3. I'm, well, I'm magic. I'm giving you my fourth round pick, my first round, fourth pick. Okay. I'm giving you... Who would you trade, Ingram or Kuzma? I'd rather have Kuzma. Okay, let's keep Kuzma. Oh, you you'd rather have Kuzma. Yeah, in New Orleans. Yeah. Okay, we'll give up Kuzma. We'll give up Ball. We'll give up uh, that fourth round pick. I mean, that first round pick. Uh, and uh, let's see who else. We'll give the you the original package, package was better than that. They offered. When Magic was still the president of the Los Angeles Lakers, he offered him way more than what you're offering right now. Right. I still wasn't done. Oh. Okay, but anyways, uh, we'll give you um, Caldwell Pope. Uh, he's on a one-year deal. He's going to be a free agent this Oh, week. never mind. Then Josh Hart. Josh Hart. You'd still need another first-round draft pick and a second, and then I might think So about we'll do that. We'll do that. We'll do that. But New Orleans probably doesn't even want to make that trade. And I'm going to be serious at the end of the day. New Orleans want, does not want to give out Anthony Davis to somebody they're going to see in the Western Conference. They're most likely going to give it to somebody in the Eastern Conference. So at the end of the day, it might uh, look who, better. Okay, so if he says he wants to be in a competitive team, so I'm either guessing Boston. Boston. He might stay. You think he'll stay if they, get, they trade no. him there? When a player says he wants out for this long – 
he wants out. I'm pretty sure he was shocked that they got the first round pick. I was shocked they got the first round pick. Everyone was shocked. It should have either gone to New to New York, where it really should have right. been. Right, I was hoping or New York should have been to Los Angeles. I was hoping, and instead it's going to be in New Orleans. You you think the the Lakers could have? Were you talking about the Lakers? The Lakers landing a number one pick, landing a number one pick. They had the percentages to get that number one pick overall. If it wasn't them, it was going to be Sacramento, and if it went to Sacramento, obviously they wouldn't even kept it. Interesting. Um, I think uh, with this new rule, I guess, you think tanking is over? Tanking is not over. It's something Oklahoma City should think about doing, by the way. Oh, my gosh. So, going – that's very interesting. I, I, If I'm the Pelicans, I might just wait until the the the, the, tra- the deadline. I, I might just wait. Might as well just wait and see how it works out With if we end up – well, not we, but if the right. Pelicans end up uh, right. landing uh, Zion, you know, they pick in Zion a, as them in number a one. perfect world, that'd be a great idea. You know, see how Anthony Davis actually likes playing with Zion Williams. What if he likes it and he wants to stay? And, and that'd be a great. But, and this is a big but, Zion Williams is already an all-star in the NBA. People talk about him nonstop. ESPN talks about him. TNT talks about him. Everyone's talking about Zion. So... Do you actually want Anthony Davis to be sharing the spotlight with a rookie? He's not going to like that. Nobody's going to like it. So Zion is actually going to actually hinder the situation a lot more than people think. You are right. I got to agree with you for this one because he is drawing so much attention. Like the guy isn't even a rookie yet. And ESPN and Bleacher's Report already like had him ranked top top notch with these NBA players. So it's like, to me, it doesn't make sense, but it's just the hype that he's created. We haven't seen this much hype since LeBron. Are you bringing him back again? Hey, so, I mean, where does, how, how good is Zion going to be in your eyes? It's going to take him a few years to develop. I'm going to be, um, right now he's playing against college athletes. These college athletes primarily are 18, 19, maybe 20. There are hardly any, any students that are saying to their junior or senior year if they're good enough. So this is going to be a harder level of competition the moment he makes to the NBA. Will he be in a triangle? Will he go ISO? How are these teams actually going to react to Zion? Because they have a lot of film on him. Everybody's talking about him. And I guarantee you that at the moment that an NBA, somewhat like mid-level player, starts looking at Zion, they're going to want to go after him. Right, they're right, going right, to right. Want to, They're going to want to hurt this kid. So it's not going to be a good situation for the first maybe one or two years. I think it's uh, very very interesting to see how he's going to end up playing and um, what is his style going to be because he needs, obviously, to develop a jump shot. And I think right. he will. I think he will. Yeah, um, but we said the same thing about Ben Simmons, that he was going to be this next prodigy. And the next thing we know, I want to trade Ben Simmons from Philadelphia. You want to trade Ben Simmons. You don't. You don't. So, I don't trust the process. Right. Okay. So going to that, switching to that real quick, you want to trade Ben Simmons. You would rather trade him than Embiid? It's tough. Because Emb- Embiid is I great. Mean, it's a really tough call. Embiid is great, and, but he's injured prone. That's the thing. Embiid's injured prone. Embiid's a little bit older. Um, between the two, I'd rather have Embiid. It's going to be a tough call on this one, but I would rather have Embiid. Ben Simmons is not making the team any better than what it is. He had the entire offseason to get better. He chose not to do that. I want somebody that's actually going to make me better. I want somebody that's actually going to help the team. I don't want somebody that's going to be selfish and hanging out with the Kardashians. Get him out of Philadelphia. Let him go to Los Angeles where he belongs. Okay, okay, okay. You said what? Um... If I am the 76 years, you know what? It's easy for me. I'll, I'll keep Ben Simmons. I feel like what? he's still, he's younger. Look, he is younger than, than uh, Joel Embiid. He is not injured prone like Joel Embiid. And I got to give a lot of credit. Joel Embiid is a great player. I like to see him play and everything. I like his uh, competitive nature. But Ben Simmons still has a lot, a lot of ways where he can improve. He's a great passer, a great ball handle. The guy is a beast. How does he do with threes and a mid ranger? Right, we work on that. We'll work on that. Look, he had look, 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 look. To work on it. He didn't. Right, he chose not. Right, to and do there that. he's still young. What is he? 21, 22? 22, I think. Twenty two. Somewhere around there. Twenty one. Okay. Look, he is a kid, and he's been playing at a high level. I think he did pretty good in these. In these, I feel like he just needed to take more shots. Just take more shots, man. 
this offseason, I have high expectations for him. I'm not going to give I up on him yet. I have high expectations for Philadelphia, too. And they, and they let me right. down. And this is going back to Philadelphia, right? So if we go back to Philadelphia, I'm keeping it. I don't know what else. I don't know what moves they're going to make in the offseason. But Get rid if, of the coaches if one. we look at it this way, right? Kawhi Leonard leaves, goes to the West. Um, you have Milwaukee. Milwaukee has uh, – they don't know if they're going to sign Middleton again. He's a free mm-hmm. agent. Uh, there's a couple of players. Lopez, I know he's, he can get right. – a uh, big, pretty juicy contract anywhere he goes. I think right now the leverage is for Philadelphia. Philadelphia has a high chance to make it to the finals next year because, yes, 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 Boston is a mess. Boston's a mess that has all these draft picks. Right, but even if they have all that, all those draft picks, they're not going to be. They have chemistry issues with all the firepower that they have. They have – look, the only way I, I agree see, with you that they have chemistry issues. Look, the issues. only way I see this working, if – if I am, if I'm Boston, mm-hmm. if I'm Boston, if you're Boston, I'll trade. What do you need? Air conditioning. Okay, turn it on. Man, this is the hot seat right here. That's he, what it he's, feels he's, like. He's hot. He's hot. Give the guess what yeah, he wants. I'm giving out some really good hot takes right now. Going back to, if I'm the if I'm the Celtics, I'm trading Jason Tatum for Ben Simmons. I think Ben Simmons would be a great fit I for the Celtics. I would gladly take Tatum. Right, if you're the Sixers, you'll get it'll it'll be a perfect fit. Embiid and, and Tatum would be a perfect fit. Yeah, and then you're gonna mess up Boston much more than what it is. No, Boston, like it'll make Ben wait, Simmons. Wait, oh, wait, I have a question it would make Ben Simmons so great. Like he would just find everybody open, everybody open. It would just he'll okay, everybody would eat. Me. Okay, let's pretend you take Ben Simmons and you give him to Boston, right? Yeah. Will Kyrie stay? Kyrie won't stay. Kyrie's out. Come on, he's out. So it doesn't matter. What does it matter? I'd rather have Tatum staying in Boston. I would never make this trade with you. That's one. Okay. I have so many draft picks. I've already seen what Ben Simmons can do. Ben Simmons has the potential to be an all-star, first-rounder, all that good stuff. But he refuses to put in the work. He thinks he's already that good. Uh, that is uh, yet to be seen. What is it? His third year now? He's entering his third year. I'm going to give him a shot. Give him a chance. I'm not going to give up on him. Not saying he's the greatest or the best, but he is an excellent passer. He was somebody. He would be somebody I want to have on my team. Good Just point. Just like guard. Lonzo again. Hmm? Just like Lonzo having him as a passer, and not doing anything else. A lot of people, and this is the thing. I'm not a big Lonzo fan, but a lot of people overlook what he can do. The guy's a great defender. The guy's a what great can he passer. Do? Sit on the bench. What? What can he do? Just sit on the bench, collect no, that money. No, I just think um, the injuries. I, I think like has hurt him a lot, but. That's another player I do see potential. Don't like him. Like not, not that I don't like him because he's you know he's a chill guy, but not a big fan of him. But I think mm-hmm. he is a great defender, like I mentioned, a great passer, has uh, very good court vision, and uh, he has a lot to improve. Young, second year in the NBA, what second, third? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so it's gonna be his third year. Come on, these up. youngsters need a lot. They got a lot where they can improve, and I think they're gonna put in the work. I don't agree with you. One second. People say they got to put in the work to do something in the NBA. I agree with you 110%. But we got to remember who we're dealing with. None of these kids have ever had a job. They have no idea what putting in the work actually means. They are only they are only here because of their God-given abilities. They're only there because they're not... Look, when I mean putting in the work, they literally have to do something in the offseason. They literally have to do something in practice. These teams don't even practice anymore. You saw that situation that happened in Chicago. They're saying, we're practicing and we don't want to do that. No wonder you're a bad organization. No wonder you want to not do anything. These kids that are in the NBA right now do not know the strict curriculum activity that they need to get to to actually win a championship. And they refuse to listen to the people that actually know what they're doing. Now, am I saying all these owners know what they're doing? No. Do all these coaches know what they're doing? No. But they know a little bit more than what these kids know. Well, it just really depends on, you You, you know, in, in that aspect, you are right because it really depends on, you know, the person as a player. Like, where can you improve? What can you do? Um, like I said, it, only time will tell if they're going to be as good as I think they're going to be. Um, I feel like Lonzo is going to change up the style. He's going to develop a better jump shot. And same goes to Ben Simmons. I just feel like Ben Simmons, somebody needs to tell him, shoot the damn ball. Yeah. You need to shoot it, period. You know? but Or do the smart thing and actually pass it to somebody that can. Well, that's what he's been doing. Look, at the end of the day, people always say that shooting should be the easiest thing in the NBA to do. 
That's what Magic says, and that's what I agree with him to is because if he has the court vision like he actually does, he should have been able to fix this by now. He's still not fixing it. And let's see what the offseason does. I'm going to give him one more chance. That's three years now that I've given him chances for. And he's still not producing. He, they should, like, I agreed with you when you said Philadelphia should be in the finals, but Philadelphia does not have the greatest coach in the world. They have somebody that knows how to lose because he was in the tanking process. They don't have anybody that's actually been there and done that. The best player that they have that has some form of maturity well, all they need is to do Jimmy is, Butler, and Jimmy Butler doesn't even know how to get there yet. Either. Right. All they need, if they manage to keep Jimmy Butler. Um, I think it, they have a shot. They just have a shot. They need to make some adjustments. Uh, I definitely seen them in the conference finals this year. Um, that's pretty much it. That's just it to it. Yeah, but isn't Jimmy Butler asking for like a max deal? This isn't, isn't this his? He is. Here? I mean, they got the money for it. They got the money for it. But would you actually have Jimmy Butler on your team compared to all these other free agents that are coming in the door? Who is going to go to Philly? You got a good point right there. Right. So, so Jimmy already. Kind of feels familiar with the system, how it works. Would Jimmy stay? Say what? Would Jimmy actually stay? That's that's a very good question. We don't know. I don't know. I don't have a clue. I don't think uh, if he doesn't stay, I think he's going to the Lakers. If the Lakers are not able to land a big star. I were Jimmy. I would want to go somewhere that can get me a championship. And the Lakers are not that team. You can say LeBron James is going to do so much better, but he's not with Jimmy Butler. 